Were you trained in MRT, the maximal restraint technique? Yes. 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 Yes, I was. Yes, we all were. Yes, all the police officers were trained in the MRT. Your police chief said on the stand that he didn't recognize that technique. Mm -hmm. I, I heard him say that. It's tough to hear people lie, just straight lie. So these officers are accusing the Minneapolis police chief of committing perjury during the George Floyd trial. The officers feel they were sacrificed for politics. Everything changed. And it didn't have to. Had we had strong leadership right from, from the very top, the governor, the mayor, our chief of police, city council of Minneapolis, the assistant chief and the deputy chiefs. This is how you treat your people. You just turn your back on us. Here now, Liz Collins. She's an award-winning investigative reporter and producer of The Fall of Minneapolis, which is just breaking today. So how badly were the American people lied to? Gosh, it's hard to con condense this, Jesse, in a, in a short segment, to be honest. And that was really why we wanted to put out this documentary, to, to give people a look um, at the lies, really, from, from the start. And we're, we're still all paying the, the consequences uh, of them. This is the very first time the police body camera footage was withheld from the public by Minneapolis police. That was for a reason. So we start the, the film right there with, here's what, you, you know, you were not allowed to see. That was only leaked about two and a half months, months later. You have George Floyd complaining that he, he can't breathe uh, before Derek Chauvin even arrives on scene. You have a black officer who arrested George Floyd that day and Alex King, and we speak to him quite a bit in the film. Remember, this is supposed to be the most racist police interaction in, in American history, uh, but nobody talks about the black officer. You also have on film uh, the uh, officers who are calling for an ambulance 36 seconds after George Floyd himself asked to be laid on the ground uh, that day. And people should, should be upset. They should, they should wonder why was this kept from them uh, for so long. I myself was working in mainstream media at, at the time, and I knew there was a lot more to this story and was really disgusted about what the press knew, what they were privy to, and they were refusing uh, to pass along to properly inform the public about what went on. Liz, tell us a little bit about that 2019 George Floyd arrest that we didn't know. So, uh, again, we're told the very next day uh, after what transpired in 2020 that uh, the Minneapolis Police Department had never heard of George Floyd. They'd never had any interaction with him at all. Uh, but he had been the subject of an undercover drug investigation that went on for months by, by Minneapolis police. Uh, and, and you see the, the arrest take place of George Floyd in, in 2019, and he is saying almost exactly the same things uh, he's saying in 2020. Um, if you play the body camera footage from both incidents, uh, side by side, which we do uh, a bit in, in the film, you, you can see that this is clearly someone who's experienced with police interactions. We go into his background. Again, that was, that was uh, held from the public uh, as well. So you spoke to the medical expert who said it was odd to see the FBI meeting with the medical examiner for a local crime. We reached out to the FBI for comment. We haven't heard back. Well, let's listen to this quickly. The original autopsy was done 12 hours after he was declared dead. The official report that came out a little bit later, I'm told, was changed. What do you think of the federal government's involvement in this case? One of the first questions I asked was, was the FBI involved? And when I found out the FBI involvement was within 12 to 24 hours, that really raised a red flag for me. So is that usual for the FBI to get involved like that for a local crime? You know, I'll be honest here. Uh, my husband was a longtime Minneapolis uh, police officer. He was the president of the, of the police union at the time, and he talks about this. I put out a book. It's called They're Lying, uh, The Media, the Left, and the Death of George Floyd. The, the movie is based on, on that book that came out last year. But, but he talks about that in his 30-plus years in, in Minneapolis uh, police uh, serving. That's never happened before. And everybody involved in the film talks about how they've never seen a case uh, that went to the FBI this quickly. That, that call was made, we know, uh, 
uh, by the Minneapolis police chief within hours of this incident. And, and I do believe that, you know, this is why uh, much of this evidence w was kept uh, from the public, because there was so much uh, involvement from, from people that had never been involved uh, before. Was the autopsy report changed? So we, uh, in the book and also in the film, we kind of just put it put it out there for people that we have uh, an autopsy done within 12 hours of George Floyd, so uh, passing away. Keep in mind, this is long before any buildings are burning in Minneapolis, uh, but you do see a narrative uh, change a bit over the course uh, of several days, and we and we go into that quite quite a bit. Um, you have meetings over and over again with, with prosecutors, and you also have some some public documentation that just came to light about the immense pressure uh, that prosecutors felt to charge, especially these three other officers, that they, in, in fact, uh, in court documents now say they were not comfortable charging these three other officers who are serving time in, in prison with uh, sentences that range from from three to, to five years. We know, of course, Derek Chauvin is behind bars for, for more than, than 20. So a lot of this stuff is, is coming to light now, uh, but people really should uh, question why? And, and all that medical documentation, it's all public documentation. Reporters yeah. could have been reporting uh, about it for a very long time. And how has your reporting on George Floyd affected you professionally? Well, I had a uh, cancel culture come after me in, in full effect. I was a longtime uh, news anchor here in the Twin Cities, and I was uh, demoted, lost my position that I had for nearly a dozen years. I'm a Minnesota native, kind of worked at the station I grew up watching, and, and I was canceled, had many uh, protests at my home, in fact. I needed hmm. to, you know, lose my job, and in some cases, people wanted to threaten my life uh, as well. But, but really what bothered me most about all of this is that the truth wasn't being told. And, uh, you know, these, these men and women... Uh, um, Minneapolis really lost the, the best of the best when it when it came to its police force, and we've seen this uh, sadly all across uh, the country. And, and they need it, their their voice back. And I hope in a way that th this movie can can do that. All right, the fall of Minneapolis out now. If you're interested, take a look. Liz, thank you so much. Thank you, Jesse. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.